It's January the 4th, 2012. Here we have Josie Setzler, and I'm Mike Benedetti. We're here. This is the second day of the Witness Against Torture um, Days of Fasting in Action to Close Guantanamo. And today was this also the second day of this trial in which Josie was one of the five defendants. This was a trial where um, you folks and other folks, I guess back in June when the House was discussing the now very controversial NDAA, uh, went up to the visitors' gallery and then said some statements down to the to the representatives um, about Guantanamo and indefinite detention. And uh, right now, people have been on trial for the last two days, um, charged with disrupting Congress. You your case was dismissed today. Yes, it was. How do you feel about that? Well, I think I feel some relief, but I also feel some disappointment to leave my co-defendants behind yeah. and not to be part of the defense this afternoon. But I had to trust that uh, they were just going to step up and do what had to be done, and they did. They did yeah. magnificently. And I guess, I guess the case against you is dismissed because of, like, not a technicality, but basically, like, whatever officer, whatever police officer was supposed to come in to identify you, whoever arrested you just wasn't, wasn't available or something, and so... Yeah, who knows? At 1 o'clock, the government rested its case, and it had not yet produced a witness that could identify me. And so we did the um, uh, motion to acquit uh, one of my co-defendants did and mm -hmm. um, un, um, specified that I had not been identified, and the court agreed with that immediately. So I was dismissed at 1 o'clock today. Yeah. So how, how else do you think the trial went today? I guess everything was wrapped up by the end of the day, right? Everybody, well, the defense rested? And the defense rested today. We put on, uh, they put on their defense this afternoon. And uh, now tomorrow the closing arguments will be made in mm -hmm. the morning. And then the, the jury, it'll go to the jury to deliberate. They will be given their instructions and okay. they will deliberate tomorrow. And I was in po court part of the day. Let me see if I can summarize what I, I wasn't there for the closing statement. Did, did people do their closing statements today? No, that no. would be tomorrow okay. morning. So maybe so this is maybe why I don't exactly understand the cases. But also the prosecution kept asking questions that I wasn't really sure what they were getting at. Like, it seems like, so the prosecution would say, all right, people were up there speaking loudly or yelling or whatever you want to say, and Congress was not actively debating. They were finishing up a vote. But nonetheless, they were doing stuff. Um, and the defendants would say, well, there's actually no no talking signs up where people were in the visitors gallery and you know there was no the police didn't give any warnings and in fact we were petitioning the government and in fact like it's not like the representatives were doing anything that they were like being really distracted from etc 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 is there like a like a like a brief summary of what the defense is in this case uh, the prosecution simply wants to this to be about causing a disruption period okay. but it does say causing a disruption with intent to impede, disturb, or disrupt uh, Con the conduct of, uh, of some conduct of some session yeah. in, in Congress. And uh, our the strongest part of our defense and the one that and, and the part that means the most to us is that our intent was not to disrupt Congress. Our, 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 dis our intent was not to impede the business of Congress. Hardly. It's just the opposite. We wanted to call them to the business that is rightfully theirs, which mm -hmm. is to uphold the law. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, we simply we wanted to use our First Amendment rights to address Congress for a redress of grievances concerning Guantanamo. Yeah. And that was the key part of our defense. And so this would be, so this would be something where a juror... It seemed like, again, that there were a lot of arguments being brought into this, that maybe some of these arguments are being brought into this so that if a juror feels like they want to acquit because they really feel like, yeah, this Guantanamo thing is a real problem, and somebody who's, like, petitioning their government about that, like, I can sympathize with that. And so if I need to argue with the other jurors, I have all these reasons to argue with the other jurors. Do you feel like this is the reason that there's a lot? I just feel like there's a lot of, like, technicalities being brought up in court today. By, by I don't the even defense know technicalities or by just, the prosecutor? By, well, I guess by everybody. I guess by all the lawyers involved. <laughs> I guess this is how court works. It's no, a lot of that is the way the court works, and I mean, there's mm. reasons for that, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, it's not. We can't necessarily, make, you know, we can't force it to be about what we want it to be about. But we do the yeah. best that we can to speak, to to speak, and we don't know that it'll help. But we mm -hmm. have spoken. This is the, um, Carmen Trotta 
very articulately, beautifully said in his opening statement that now is the time and now and this is the place. And he said that in response to the prosecutor's opening statement when he had said there is a time and place for protest and this isn't it. And uh, we beg to disagree and we want the jurors to know that. Now the judge gives them very specific instructions about what the law states and you know what they have to do in finding the facts and we'll see what happens yeah. but but we we wanted to drive home again and again what our intent was we, we didn't go there just to be disruptive you know create a, uh, to create a commotion or something like that we came with a message if you wanted to disrupt Congress you would disrupt Congress you know oh yeah saying? I imagine there's some people <laughs> among very us capable group that would, of people. would know how to do that you know <laughs> if you want to call this disrupting Congress forget about it. this is nothing well, there was, I was surprised at how much talk, talk there was about Guantanamo. It did work out well. Yeah, because I thought that this was going to be prohibited, but people were talking about Guantanamo like all afternoon long. Yeah, I was very pleased to see that. Um, right. uh, Carmen Trotta uh, examined uh, Brian Hines, and um, Brian was able to bring um, um, the main motivation into the courtroom. Mm. I think if, we w- if any of us were to get too particular about policy distinctions and things like that you know they weren't you know they weren't going to allow that but you know what we don't have to argue with the jurors about fine points of the, the history or the policy we need to look at the big picture that Guantanamo is wrong it, it's a horrible um, uh, travesty for the rule of law and you know it's easy to get that in there it's mm. important to get that in there and our, my co-defendants, my former co-defendants, <laughs> I'm not one of them anymore, yeah. but they did it beautifully. It was, I was just um, moved. They did a fantastic job. It's in the hands of the jury, you know. We, we, we have to trust. We, they have to trust that they, they did what they came there to do, which was to speak. To, to, to speak for the men in Guantanamo, to speak for their right to due process to speak for the right of innocent men at Guantanamo to be released. That was what, I want to tell you, that that was what motivated me. It's the first time that I've gone to trial. It's the first time that I've done in my life. This was a big thing for me, but how did I come to that point? Back in June, I, I learned, we, we all learned, that the National Defense Authorization Act, the same act that is finally done and signed, mm-hmm. Obama just signed it, had provisions in it, which would make, which would put into hard law a prohibition against releasing these detainees, regardless of whether they were innocent or not, because the standard for allowing them to be released was so high that it would be impossible for them to meet that standard. And you know, wow, I can't live with that. You know, Congress is my Congress is willing to do this. What you know? What did what did it mean? Everything that I ever learned about the rule of law and what my country is about. The rule of law is the foundation of our democracy. I learned that as a high school student. And, you know, I believed it. I believed it. How can this be? And I needed to speak about that or else I was complicit. And you could say, what meaning does it have to speak? I mean, if people are skeptical, and I think a few people around me that know me back home may be skeptical. Sure they are, you know. But I speak. I I don't want to be naive about it. But if I speak and people know that I spoke, it makes it easier for the next person to speak. Just like other people in Witness Against Torture that have spoken have made it easier for me to speak. That's why I come here, to get the courage. <laughs> I can't be Kelly to catch courage. So I catch courage from all of you, and I'm very grateful.